Okay, there. Um, looks like we're looks like we're starting. So, um, so thanks for being here uh, this afternoon and this evening, um, whatever time zone you're in. And so I'm sitting here with Josh with WCR on the East Coast, and uh, we're we're doing what we're calling a, a question and answer for Ederay, but really it's more just kind of a discussion about window cleaning and just kind of whatever's on your mind, whatever whatever's there. We'll kind of kind of start. Um, those of you that, that know who we are, um, you know, that are part of that, there probably are a few people out there that may not know too much about us. So I'll just kind of start with Ederay products. Um, you know, we've been around actually a, a physical, like legitimate company since 1936 and um, started by a, a man, which I know is going to be something we talk about in a minute, but um, Ederay Stacconi um, was an Italian immigrant who came over in the early 30s didn't speak much English, didn't really have anything to do um, other than he wanted to be in the new world at this point and, and get some things done. And so he did what he knew how to do and what he did in Italy, which was wash windows. And so he went around and, and you know, went around. There's, there's actually a picture in our office at this point of him on his Indian motorcycle as he drove around with a ladder, bidding and cleaning windows, really not unlike what we do today not a lot of motorcycles with ladders, but, um, but, but definitely going around um, do, doing this whole thing. And then, you know, eventually realized, you know, people would call back and they go, Hey, I got some streaks or I got some things I want you to redo. And he didn't really like the tools. So he went back to the different suppliers that he bought the tools from. And like, like most suppliers and most customers, they basically said, no, it's you, not us. We sell the best products and you don't know what you're talking about. And so he ended up inventing, literally the modern squeegee we have the patent in our office in 1936 that um basically it's it's very similar to to our brass squeegee today a little different but um, for the most part it was the angle it was the way the rubber attached to the blade it was the way the handle and the angle that was on it and created that 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 design and and worked with it for him to do it and then he went around and um tried to sell it to different people and got the same kind of reaction that you, know, you don't need anything, we're fine. The tools we have are wonderful. I don't know what you're talking about. And so, and, and if you go on our website, many of you know this story, but um, so Ederay went to the largest distributor at the time, which was in New York. And just for the sake, cause they're still around today, I'm not gonna say their name cause it's not who we're on online with, but um, basically went to him and he said, okay, well, I'll make you a deal that by the end of the month, your customers will be begging to buy our products or my product at this particular point. It was really only one. And the wager for it was the finest hat in New York City. And, um, you know, and again, remember this was 1936. This wasn't like 2010 or whatever. Um, and uh, anyway, long story short, we proudly display the finest hat in New York City in our showroom um, at this particular point. But, but all that to say that, um, Ederay stands for always have. Um, he, he was a window cleaner by, by profession. That was what he did. Made window cleaning tools for the window cleaner. Um, that was basically how he got started. And, you know, again, we make a lot more things than one squeegee at this point. We make a lot of different tools, but it all basically is for the window cleaner. Um, we're going to talk about some other different things, but everything we make, literally everything, including grabbers and dusters, it all has the window cleaner in mind. We do sell it in other avenues and other channels, but we start with the window cleaner. And Ederay's daughter, um, Diane, many of you have met her, seen her at different shows or events or different things over the years. She still sits in customer service answering the phone. Ederay's long gone. Um, it's been gone for a number of years now. His grandson is the president of the company. It's still family owned, still run. And basically the, you know, we have plastered all over the building that, that we make tools for window cleaners by a window cleaner. So that that's basically what our, what our motto is. And that's who we are. And that's who we will continue to be. And as long as the, you know, it's not the Stacconi family because Diane married a Smolik is the last name, but as long as they're part of this company, that's going to be our, our mantra and that's our marketing plan moving forward is we make window cleaning tools for professionals by professionals and that's who we are. So, um, you know, WCR, you're, you're probably the newest 
distributor, window cleaning supplier in, in the industry. I mean, there might be a few other smaller ones, but you guys have, have come in there. Why don't you guys talk about a little bit about you and who you are and where you came? Yeah, definitely. Well, I'm Jersey from WCRWindowCleaner.com, window cleaning resource, all the same thing. Um, and uh, yeah, we are relatively new in the world of window cleaning suppliers. The companies that you were talking about you're talking the original, the OGs back in the day. Those are the guys that traded hats. If right. you traded a hat now, I mean, it's going to be a ball cap and look kind of weird, you know. Yeah. But, uh, so we are kind of new, but we've been in the game now. Oh, gosh, it's been probably 13 years, something like that. I'll get yelled at for uh, getting the dates wrong, but it's been yeah. a while. And we kind of started more off as a resource, right? Uh, when we got into it, even though we're new, you remember there was a point where there wasn't much out there technologically. There wasn't really the website presence. There wasn't websites, really. It was an mm -hmm. email group, which was started by an awesome guy. Um, but that was it. There was that, and there was some magazines, and there wasn't really kind of a resource for this, this industry that was kind of like glorified janitors, right? We were kind of on the cusp of things. So we thought, well, you know, starting Window Cleaning Resource, and I was not one of the starters. It was Chris and Alex, of course, that did that. But they kind of looked at it and said, okay, so we know how our culture is and we know that we're proud of what we do. So let's build something that we can kind of build a culture around and start to kind of be a resource for people. So there's one spot you can go ask questions. You can learn what you need to learn. All of it's our, our uh, archive. It's all there. And that's kind of how it all started. So uh, Window Cleaning Resource then started selling supplies um, not too long after that. It wasn't really kind of the, uh, the idea to get into supplies at the time as much, but now getting into it, it is just, it's a, it's a whole new thing where we can now be a resource for people to help them, but we can also sell supplies if they need it. And that's really a really kind of a cool integration. My, my personal job, a lot of people know me from uh, WCR Nation, the Window Cleaner Podcast, of course, but I'm also a sales rep here. So I have people all day long. Uh, my 13 hour shift that I kind of try to stick to people call me, people email me. I do bids for people say, Hey, I got a project that I just did. That's bigger than I've ever done before. Can you give me some advice? What do you think about this? You know, I'm looking at adding this service on, what do you price? What any question you can kind of think of. And that's, that's really what our core was. We want to be somebody who helps. We want to be a company that is still a resource. So opening up the Avenue of doing supplies was, was kind of a, it went hand in hand and really worked out pretty well. Yeah. It, um, and, you know, one thing I, I'd like to throw out there, you, you stated it yourself, but you know, this industry is, I don't want to say it's old. Um, it's been around for a long time. And, and most of the window cleaning suppliers that are out there have been around for a long time. A lot of them yeah. are second and third generation and that sort of thing. And, you know, it's catalog sales. It's, you know, you go into my shop kind of a thing and what you guys did still do really that the rest of the industry is just kind of catching on to is, is you guys have been a great resource. You've been well all over YouTube, the internet, you know, social media creating, you know, it started out with them. Um, what, what, what do they call that? Basically the job boards or the forums, having those kinds of discussions and that sort of thing. And, and so you've created and I would say more than anything, you probably attract more of the younger people coming into the industry because of that. And, um, and, and it's, it's been a great thing to, to basically watch this industry slowly but surely kind of recreate itself into the modern world, um, yeah. which we're, we're all trying to figure out. And then of course this year, it all blew up and we kind of all started over. So I think which we can, yeah. we can definitely talk about. A couple things, um, we got a Jacob Williams, um, Jersey, what's up, buddy? So I'm shouting it out to you. Um, so, uh, you know, we get that that periodically. And uh, and something we didn't say out there, this is a question and answer for both of us. Um, so anybody out there who has a question, as random or silly as you may think it is, go ahead and ask it. The whole point of this is to, to talk to you guys, have you guys talk to us, get to know who we are. You can see us, we can't see you, but that doesn't change in really anything. You, you just have a face with the name at this point. So yeah. um, fire away with your questions. We have one here that isn't really window related. We can talk about it anyway, but it says, what's the difference between a duster and a premium duster? And, um, you know, I'm, I'm assuming you're referring to some of the, some of the products that we have, but over the years, which has happened in, in all the products that we and everybody else has made is 
you know, there's been this, what, what we in the industry call kind of the race to the bottom. So um, the, the next tool that comes out is it's better than what it was, but it's definitely cheaper. And then the next one that comes out is, well, it's even cheaper than that. And then pretty soon it's, it's getting to be pretty cheap. And what was happening with dusters in general is they were literally getting to the point where they didn't work that you can get them for, you know, buck 99 on Amazon or Walmart or wherever you want to go and you go to use it and it would blow up in the corner and not do anything. And so what we ended up doing was, you know, for the professionals, and like I said, we make tools for professionals, not retail, even though we sell in retail. Um, we wanted to make sure that the professionals have tools they could rely on and use. And so we created the premium duster that isn't the cheapest one on the market, but it actually has depending on what the duster is, the most fiber, the most, you know, um, fluff on it, depending, you know, e even if it was a um, feather duster, it actually has more feathers in it than what you would get if you were just going to buy a regular duster, you know, from some retail establishment. So that's what we mean by premium duster. So um, yeah. that's there. Josh, do you have any, any, or should I call you Jersey? I guess it depends yeah. on what people know you from. <laughs> Either or. Yeah. Jersey's yeah. fine. People usually call me that, but either way, my real name is Josh. So, but I yeah. do have a question for you on that. So you guys noticed that there was a market for a premium side of things. And we've noticed that too. We have a couple products that are more expensive than any product in that category has ever been. And we can't keep them on the shelf. So yeah. have you seen that where people are now all of a sudden taking pride? They, they want that kind of, you know, exclusive kind of product or they want something that's really ultra premium because they're using it. There's that pride there. Have you seen that change? Yeah. Um, yes, we have the, the, the short answer to that. I mean, let me back up a little bit that, you know, at array products, the products that we manufacture, we have never, ever thought we were going to be the lowest price product in the market. Like I said, yeah. we make professional quality tools. We haven't talked about now, but I'm sure we will at some point, the rubber that we use, which is different than what everybody else is. It's also the most expensive on the market. Um, we don't apologize for that. There's a reason it's the most expensive on the market. And so um, we have, we have never basically gone to, we're going to, we're going to cheapen our professional line just so we can sell more and get it to a higher distribution point. That's that's not that's not what we do. If we're yeah. still family owned and they still care about the quality that's there. But what we did notice during that period, and this was, you know, I, I've been around long enough to have seen this, but during the last recession, 08, 09, 2010, you know, there was this huge push. There was a lot of people out of work. There was a lot of businesses that weren't working. And so everybody was looking for the cheapest thing they could find because that was just the trend. And, and uh, we fought that. We never really had the cheapest product that, that was part of it. But we did notice initially that there was obviously a push to like, we can't sell your product, it's too expensive. Um, what we have seen, um, it, it's hard to tell exactly when, but probably I'll say 2011, just to put a date on it up until even now, I mean, this is a weird year as well, but we have not seen a drop in, you know, hey, we need your stuff to be cheaper because people want to want to do it. De quality definitely matters in people that, that especially people that do what our customers and your customers do, which is earn a living cleaning windows. Yeah. They don't want to have the cheapest tool on the market. They want to have one that they can make the most money with. And that's yeah. that's basically what we're doing. So we're seeing that increase even now, even during this weird year, people still are like, you know, I, I'm not going to buy the, I'm not going to buy something cheaper just to make it happen. I just want to make sure that I can earn a living. And that's been yeah. weird that in and of itself, but the tools themselves haven't been any less quality. Yeah. You know, it's crazy too about Ettore rubbers. Like it's known as basically the rubber it's ultra premium. It is the like, Everything is then compared to Ettore, right? But people just ask for Ettore. When they buy, that's what they ask for. There's a lot of that kind of thing going out where people just know what they want. They don't necessarily, it's like, why does Ferrari not have a sale? Because nobody cares about, if you're buying a Ferrari, you're buying it because it's a Ferrari, not because right. of the price. Right. It's kind of the same thing where you're, you're seeing people buying things because of the name. They just know that's what I want. Right, right. And, and you know, it's, it's a, that's a, that's a, that can be a blessing and a curse because you know, you're the target of, of all of those particular things. But, yeah. but that's something, you know, we talk about this regularly in our, in our marketing stuff and our quality control that, that we, 
don't ever want to lose that. We, we want, you know, so if you buy an Ettore product, whatever it is, it, it can be, you know, a, a little teeny acrylic squeegee that you'd throw in your glove compartment or whatever, it is going to be the best quality of that tool that you can find on the marketplace. Yeah. And, and you just know, I mean, you know, a lot of people say that, but, um, you know, it, it's, we live it, we can talk about that. Diane, the, you know, chairman of the board answers the phone in customer service and That's she great. hears, good, bad, and the ugly every single day um, yeah. as part of that. And if we have a problem, believe me, we talk about what are we going to do to make sure we make the best quality product out there. So, yeah. it, uh, you know, it's that that's where we started and that's where we're going. But, you know, there's a lot of pot shots and people trying to no, they're not really the quality they used to be anymore. And it's like, I assure you, we are <laughs> and we continue to. And it's it's not always easy because it, it gets expensive. So, um, yeah. And it's I think people are more used to companies not being the quality they used to be. And they would say that just out of like, well, that's what I've seen with everything else, but not knowing that you guys really do go above and beyond it. I know you guys have done a ton of uh, magazines and, and articles and things with your factory tours and just products and stuff. And it's no, it's no secret what you do. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not like you're hiding what or how, or what you, I mean, it's all there. I mean, you know, the same thing when uh, brass went up, what was that? gosh, I don't remember what that was, maybe 80s or something, brass doubled overnight because China yeah. bought it all up. But you guys didn't raise your prices because of that. You know, yeah. like that's one of those things where you didn't cheap out. You didn't buy cruddy rubber or uh, cruddy uh, brass because you couldn't get, you still bought the same stuff. I mean, sure. people don't know those little things. It's, yeah. it's they're not used to that anymore. Well, no, and, and that's exactly the case because, you know, I mean, I, we could go into brand strategy and all kinds of different things. Brands, you know, they're selling out and selling their name and doing some other stuff and we aren't we're still the same family we're still still the same thing um that's a there's a question here on here that actually talks about that so it says brass historically has been the standard is the brass squeegee still the number one squeegee seller Ooh. obviously that's a loaded question because it depends on who you're asking but um it, as far as our product um Ettore's, uh patent was a brass squeegee that, that had the angles and, and had the, had the tool specifically that was there. And the, you know, obviously you can put several different size channels from six inch all the way up to 36 inch channel on, on the squeegee handle. Um, our number one seller that has been since the history of our company, that's eight, 86 plus years now, has been an 18 inch brass squeegee, still mm -hmm. is today. Wow. has been for forever and, and every year we look okay is this the year that something else is going to take over and you know it's you look at it and go no there it is you know that that's yeah. basically the same one same thing with rubber our number one size rubber is an 18 inch you know gross pack or whatever whatever size they're going to the quantity they're going to get but it's it's 18 inch that's still number one by far so that that wow. is that's definitely true yeah um so um, what about you guys? Because I know you sell other, you know, Unger, for example, they're known for their stainless steel. Not yeah, yeah. So I want to talk about Unger. They, they, I know they still sell brass, but that's probably not their number one seller. Yeah, yeah. First off, before I get too far, I'm sorry, uh, Jacob Williams, I want to say, what's up, buddy? Back to you. If anybody's got another shout out, uh, definitely mention it and ask questions. This is awesome. Um, but yeah, 18 inch, I think is really what would be considered across all platforms as like the standard. When you start getting into more of the specialty pivot style tools, the smaller, the better, yeah. because for that to, to move on the glass the way that you want it to, the bigger the channel. And even in an 18 starts to almost catch bind yeah. because they're trying to go over dry. So right. that gets to be smaller, but yeah, 18, hundred percent, 18 is still the best selling across and that's every platform. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's basically there. Um, we just try to get through some of these as we're getting uh, quite a few questions. One yeah, of the things cleaning. that's annoying for me is the metal button to interchange the squeegee. My fingers hurt pressing for a while. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that is, uh, um, I, I'm not entirely sure what metal button. That's I, probably the, the click lock thing on the pole, maybe. I'm not sure. I, I think if they're talking about squeegee, I think they may be uh, thinking of a clipless style handle that has the metal kind of tab on the bottom and, and that's not an Ettore thing. Ettore is more right. on the quick release top mount stuff. So yeah, exactly. Um, or, or permanent fixed, you know, whatever that's, and there's a few other in there that, which we'll talk about. It's, it's not a problem. There was one here about Tucker poles. You have a metal piece. This is probably directed more to you, a metal piece to screw the Tucker pole to the brush. 
the piece of I'm not going to say what the rest of it was keeps cracking. <laughs> yes. So, what's up? You... Uh, do- yeah. What's up, Doctor Seuss, uh, 1973, uh, the guy who uh, had some choice words there. Uh, yeah, on the uh, Tucker pole to the brush, the piece of uh, blank keeps cracking. I think what you're talking about is the socket itself. Uh, if you're still on watching, let me know if it's the socket that metal screws onto the back of the brush. Um, if that's the, the problem, do let me know too. And if you guys buy products, you know, uh, just like what Ederay does, like any products that have issues, if you do buy from WCR, no matter what it is within a year, uh, that's our, you know, our warranty. If anything breaks uh, due to manufacturer defects, we're going to fix that. So definitely let us know if that is something that, uh, that uh, came from us. Sure. And, and I'm just so you know, and again, I'm not going to speak for all the other manufacturers, but anytime you do that or get a customer that does that, that's our policy as well. So, Mm -hmm. you know, by all means, if something breaks, let them know, which we prefer because that's who you bought it from. And then they can know what's going on and relay it back to us, or you can contact us directly and we'll either direct them through you guys or we'll do it directly, whatever. But, you know, you know, our, our guarantee basically is hundred percent customer satisfaction. So if you're not satisfied with the product for whatever the reason, we will do everything we can to make sure that you are satisfied. And that includes replacing it, whatever, I mean, whatever that yeah. takes. So, and I know, you, know what's, you guys do that too. Yeah. What's actually amazing about that, if you think about it is, and you know, these numbers and you don't have to obviously say them, but think of how many squeegee just handles go out every year across the world for you guys mm-hmm. and how many actually have issues. It's so absolutely little, but you're talking about, you know, tens of thousands of plus, you know, they go out and you're having, you know, such a slow issue. It's actually pretty amazing when you think about that product that has been out for so stinking long is still just like tried and true. And like you said, that brass handle still being the number one seller, like that amazes me because there's so many innovations in the market that you would think that it would start to mend towards plastic or mend towards quick release, but it just, it's, it just, it's tried and true. It just works. Yeah. And you know, what, in our experience, we were talking a little bit offline in in, earlier, um, you know, about this, but, you know, window cleaners uh, are, are unique, a unique bunch. It's a unique industry. And, and the way I describe it is it's the only industry, it's probably not the only one, but very few industries where the person cleaning the window is, is by himself all day with nothing to do, but think staring at a reflection <laughs> of himself. And yeah, so, yeah. you know, you've got, they've, you've got, everybody has the answer to all the world problems, the best products ever made, you know, you know, all, all those particular things. And um, it's it's just kind of an interesting interesting thing. And we, we periodically along the lines you were you were just saying, we'll have some meetings with customer service or something, and they'll they'll go, yeah, we're having a big problem with you know whatever it is. Let, let's say it's a, a channel, you know, the channels. You know, so we've we've had some people, you know, that that uh, we, we definitely have to look into quality control. You know, what's going on? And it's like, all right, so what what's happening? Well, we had we had two customers that um, bought our 18 inch channel or not bought that, that wanted a replacement or whatever they, whatever they wanted this month um, on 18 inch channel. So we've got like a huge, huge quality control problem. And it's like, yeah. okay, well we sold 150,000 of those last month. And the fact that we had two, I don't think that's an epidemic, but you know, yeah, but it, yeah. it's it, like you said, it feels, oh my gosh. And, and especially if it happens to you and yeah. you need it fixed, that's a really important thing, yeah. but it's um, you're right. There's when you look at how many are out there and how many are part of it and, you know, we've, we have people we'll probably have somebody here today, you know, heck, I have a squeegee from my grandfather that was made in 1947. We still use it. I mean, we get this all the yeah. time. And, that's crazy. Um, it's, uh, it's like, that's, it's a great legacy to have for sure. Yeah. Well, let me ask you one question kind of on something separate. We talked about rubber before, but I want to know personally, has your rubber formula ever changed? I mean, why is it that Ederay rubber, like I said, is kind of considered the premium. Like what makes it stand out like that? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, You'd ask about something off limits. We're not going to tell you the formula to the rubber, obviously. No, no, no. (laughs) (laughs) Well, how many cups is it? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, It's so, so the, uh, because we get, we get this question a lot. Like, you know, our competitors um, come out with different ones. They're now the big trend is colored. You know, you want to have a green one or a red one or whatever, you know, the, the, the different kinds of things. And we sought out a long time ago um, to, to, you know, there, there's an issue with rubber. You know, you guys are on the East Coast. You're about to get into cold weather. 
you know, the viscosity or viscosity is a wrong word, but the, the stiffness of the rubber when it gets cold changes. And so you have winter rubber and summer rubber and you have all these different things um, on, on a lot of different stuff. And so we, we basically made it kind of our mission that, that we weren't, we weren't going to do that. We were going to make a formula of rubber and it didn't have to be rubber. We looked at lots of different things um, that, that were part of that silicone, silicone mix. Um, we looked at plastics. We looked at all kinds of different things that, that could, could actually work with that. And, and what we determined was there's, there's a, the mixture. So, I mean, to be perfectly honest, the formula of the rubber isn't as dramatic as, as the, there's two things. One, it's, it's, it's the density of the rubber. So it doesn't get too stiff when it's cold and it doesn't get too floppy when it's hot. Yeah. Um, and there's a, there's a, there's a fine line and, and I'm sure you've sold it where, you know, cause I, I've, I've seen them when you see that we are other competitors, like somebody's using their summer rubber and it's really hot and you, it won't even work because it's, yeah. it's just too loose on the particular thing. And we, we've spent years, decades perfecting that formula that it doesn't get too stiff when it gets cold and it doesn't get too loose when it's hot. And, you know, that there, there might be, you know, somebody's probably going to go, well, I'm in the Mojave desert and it's 127 in the sun. And one day I had, okay, you might have, you know, rare occasions, but in general, that that's the other one. And then that's the, the first thing. The second one is the, you know, when you look at a squeegee blade, I don't have one to show you, but when you look down at the edge, that has to be perfect for the court, whether it's a six inch channel or six inch piece of rubber or, or 22 or 36 inch, that has to be absolutely perfect all the way down or you're gonna get a holiday spot or you're gonna get a, a streak or you're gonna get a line or you're gonna get something that's part of that. And yeah. you, you had alluded to that. We, um, people still don't believe we do this, but we hand inspect every single piece of rubber to make sure that there isn't any flaw there. And our, literally nobody does that. It's, it's time consuming and it's expensive, obviously, to have somebody do that. But our, our defective rate on rubber is, is literally non-existent. Every yeah, I, once I, in a while, we'll get, we'll get somebody go, yeah, I, I have a streak in it. It's like, okay, I mean, you can send it back, but I mean, it, it's, it's yeah. so rare that it's just not, it, it just doesn't happen because we, yeah. we are that precise because for that very reason, we want to make sure that that particular works. So, so to answer your question, it's, we, we are constantly looking at the formula, but the formula is, it's more temperature related, all purpose that's gonna work in any scenario. That's more what we're concerned about and that's what we do. Yeah, I heard uh, this is an old statistic, but uh, that you guys were at 13% uh, with your quality control and rubber. And as soon as you went over to the hand inspected, it went down under 1%. Yes, yeah, even less than that's, that. I mean, it's, it's, it's huge. Hard. It's hardly even a percentage. Um, it's not. Yeah, and, and you know, and a lot, a lot of people, it's like, well, we'll just, we'll just replace it. It's really no big deal. But it's like, yeah, but when you're the window cleaner and you have that one of those that's defective, and you're on the 38th floor on a, on a, you know, Bozeman's chair, you're yeah. not going to be all that happy to be replacing your rubber. So we want to make sure that it's there. Yeah. So. What some people don't notice too is that Ettore is probably one of the only brands that I can think of off the top of my head that has one rubber. Everybody has like hard and a soft, or there's a company that their hard was actually too hard. And now they have a medium, right? Right. They all have the two kinds. You're the only company that has master rubber. Like it's, there's one, right. you, you, it's so formulated to work across the board that you have only one. That's right. pretty amazing. Yeah, that, that's itself. exactly one, and one other thing I, I brought it up, but it's, it's something that's there. Cause it's, it's kind of a trend, I guess that, that you see now is a colored rubber. So just not that it matters. It's, it's a squeegee. I mean, you call it a, call it rubber, but um, if it's colored, it isn't rubber. Mm. <laughs> but they, and everybody says that, oh, you know, our, our rubber, you know, cause we get that question all the time. Why don't you come up with different color rubber? We totally can, it just won't be <laughs> rubber. It'll yeah. be whatever it is, you know, that can be silicone or it can be, you know, it's basically a form of plastic that, that you make it to make it those colors. But um, so and, if, and if you want to enter a rubber, you're not gonna have it colored, it's gonna be black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that's the same thing with rolls too. A roll is not you cannot make a roll out of rubber because rubber has to be what form pressed or how do they consider yeah, it? Yeah, so exactly. you can only make it in single pieces. So when they go, oh, I like a roll, a fifty foot roll of Ettore, it's like yeah. that's real rubber, you know? Yeah. Well, no, that because you know we get that you know oh you you must extrude it, and it's like well if we did it would be a mess. 
<laughs> so <laughs> yeah, that's, not, yeah imagine. that's not the way that's going to work. But yeah, so no, that's it's a uh, yeah, and and you know, and the reason is it's harder to create the rubber formula to to, to do both. Um, and that was just something that the Smallick family decided a long time ago is we're going to make this easier that works for the works for the people that are out there doing the job and not making it complicated. Because, it, you know, if you think about like you guys distributor wise, um, I know the customers at the end user don't care, but, you know, let, like right now is a perfect example. You're out of rubber and you need to buy some, but you still you still are going to have some hot days. Yeah. Well, but but not for long. It's going to start to be cold. So when you place your order with whoever you're going to buy it from, are you going to get the summer formula? Or are you going to get the winter formula? And if you buy the the summer formula, you have what a week, two weeks, a month, maybe at the yeah. most before then. That's not going to sell. Then you got to carry that inventory all the rest of the year till it gets warm again. And that was the other reason. It's like no, that's just going to complicate things and make it a mess. So we don't. Yeah. Do by the way, if you're uh, watching or listening, uh, like uh, I just uh, missed it here. Who was that that said they're listening out there? I missed it. I'll find. Oh, it's S W C B A Y. I uh, said he's listening on the job. But if you're listening or watching, comments because uh, WCR is going to give away a free gross of 18 inch array rubber. So if you haven't tried it, you're getting a gross of 18 inch rubber, uh, courtesy of Window Cleaning Resource, of course. So best comment wins. I'll choose the winner and we can go from there. But. I just wanted to put that out there because I forgot that a little bit earlier. <laughs> okay. Um, two questions here I'll, I'll, um, I'll throw out here. Any plans for a swivel tool or different co colored handles and channels? We get the colored handles and channels um, yeah. quite a bit. But um, so I'll answer that one first. Actually, we, we are. Um, the colored handles and channels, it's, it's interesting. We usually do that on a promotional. It's not even necessarily a promotional, but a limited basis i'll say it that way and so um actually there it's just coming back we're going through quality control at this point but um anodized um, aluminum channels in it's basically a i don't want to call it ettore blue it's, it's kind of a sky blue um darker color that's going to be there limited limited quantities we'll let you know um so you know and, and you know whatever the quantities are that are available and when they're sold out they're sold out and that's basically what we have so we'll have you know, several thousand of those available here pretty soon. That that request comes up quite a bit. So it's like, okay, there's no reason we can't. So we're, we are. So that's something to look forward to. The swivel tool, um, I, I, it, it's, I'm not entirely sure because there's several different types of tools out there. We do make what we call the, um, um, it's not the super channel, but um, wow, well, I lost Super my, system. Yeah, super system, super thank system. you. I knew it was super. Um, um, <laughs> The, uh, you think I would know that considering I create the names of these things. But um, <laughs> anyway, so the, the super system channel uh, hand, handle and washer both swivel with that. If they're meaning something like a um, wagtail or something like that at this point, we can get into that if you want. That's something that we don't really think there's a need for it. And we can talk about why if we want to. But so we do have super systems um, that are part of that. Follow up with that. The next one is, is there a wide body channel um, for the Ettore backflip, which would be like the Soren or the Sorbo um, thing. We make one, it's called the super channel. That's a thicker mm -hmm. aluminum um, kind of a thing. And the answer is yes, any of our handles actually, there's like on the backflip, you'd have to buy what we call a conversion plate that, that allows for the thicker and that fits any of our channels. So whatever channel we have, we make a wide body or super channel um, plate to convert that to, to whatever. So both of those situations, yes, we do. And if you have any questions about it, you can either let me know, Josh, you certainly could know because you have our catalog as well. So, oh yeah, definitely. We sell that. Uh, I think it's like 12 or 13 bucks for that conversion kit. It's super popular guys want to go with a backflip, but they want to put a super channel on or a wide body and totally doable. It's a, it's a kind of an interesting conversion too, because you can throw a wide body on something like the super channel. If people who are watching don't know what a wide body channel is compared to a regular channel, uh, standard channels, what you'd normally see kind of everywhere, but a wide body is a thicker metal, so it can go longer. That's when you see those 36s and things like that. Yeah. But Ettore makes a super channel, which is a wide body, but the nice thing is it uses standard rubber. So if you're going over to, like you had mentioned, uh, Sorin, which you know is Sorbo for a flat top, and some brands make that. You can go with an Ettore Super Channel, still use the same rubber that you use on every other channel. If you have crews of guys, some guys want to use a wide body, maybe you have a high rise division who wants the wide body or a route division. You can use the same rubber 
on uh, the same channel. So it's pretty awesome. And it's yeah. cool. It looks amazing. It's like the coolest looking one out there. Yeah. And there's, there's, there's a lot of, a lot of YouTube and, and uh, social media buzz on that particular item. One other comment that's there just because you, you had mentioned it. Um, Soren and Sorbo is kind of the, they, they were kind of the, uh, I don't know, they, they started the whole wide body um, channel, channel kinds of a thing. And they have, they have a unique rubber that's basically got a flat piece on the bottom to fit in there. We actually make our rubber fit that too. Um, yeah. it's, we call it Soren rubber as well. So, so for those of you that are just, you know, hell bent on have, using a Sorbo channel for, for the reasons that you like it. And there's a lot of people that do, that's fine. You can buy Ettore rubber for those, those channels on any of the channels as well. So. Yeah. What's, what's kind of interesting about Sorbo too, is that they, when they had started, the reason they had switched the rubber was because of the slots. There was the, Oh goodness. I wanted to say it's the widget, but I don't think that's what it is, but it's the cutter, right? Yeah. You can cut it and then you'd move it in the track. So that's where that flat body kind of became more synonymous for that. But there are so many people who run Sorbos that don't even know that that's a thing and yeah. they still like that flat kind of flat top rubber. So Right. And if you've ever done, tried to do that, it's really difficult to make the rubber cut in a way that you want it to do. Not to I wasn't going to say that, but yes. <laughs> yes very, very no, hard. I can. I'm a competitor. I can say that. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it, it's not impossible. It can be done, but it's, it's, you know, everybody's like, yeah, it's a great idea. And it's like, that's a pretty precision cut you want to make. You don't want to yes. have that be wavy. So well, um, think of all the work you guys go into to make uh, rubber that crisp line. I mean, if you know it, you know, that right angle of kind of the rubber, that little corner is all that touches the glass. So people don't understand that. There's another thing. If you're getting streaks in your rubber, especially at array, not just to keep going back. I really like your rubber, but yeah. if it's, if you're getting streaks from it and there's two end uh, brass clips in there, take one out, only run one brass clip. And then the rubber tends to float while still being staying in the place. And you're not forcing the rubber to lay a certain way. So if you ever get a streak or a smear using a premium rubber like that, take one end clip out and I guarantee it'll go away. Sure. And, you know, you can also flip it over too, which is um, well, it's yeah. obvious, but some people don't know that. So um, that's there. There's a, one other question here. Um, and by, by the way, keep them coming. But um, I am starting a window cleaning business, looking to start with two brass um, squeegees, one golden glove, looking to start with brass Ettore because it's cheaper. Um, a. McKennedy, I guess, is, is who said that. Um, never heard anybody say our brass squeegee is cheaper, but... Um, those, those are great tools that you can make a lot of money with. So um, thumbs up for sure on your choices. Yeah. And uh, obviously expand from there. You're going to need definitely some poles and some other things to help you. But um, WCR can definitely help you with that. And, uh, you know, we also have a ton of videos on things that can go with that as well. So, yeah. And just something to go on that. My first kit. Now, this is 15 or 16 years ago was an Ettore kit. You guys have a starter kit that has a bag. And it's, you know, cool. Everything's in its place. You know, you feel like you're, you're opening up your, your sniper rifle when you get there, right? That starter kit is not uh, the cheapest. Nothing, again, is playing on price. But that kit comes with everything you need. It's all in a bag. It comes with a pole. It comes with different size channels, scraper. It, it comes with what you need. So if you are looking at starting a company, look into starter kits like that. Because, yes, it's nice to have a squeegee. But there's going to be a time you'll be on a job. You're going to have the wrong size channel. You're not going to have a razor you need. You're going to need a pole. And then all of a sudden, after the fact, you're out buying it. So if you can scrape the money together, I mean, you're still talking 250 300 bucks in that range. And uh, it's it's a really good bargain. So something to yeah. think about. And, you know, it's, it's something that, that we always like to say, because, you know, when you, when, you, when you throw out a number like that, um, you know, $250, $300, $400, wh whatever, because by the time you're done, you, know, you, you got the different things, that $400 is going to make you tens of thousands of dollars when you when you turn that around, and so that that cost is almost insignificant, um, you know, working with it because it's your time and it's making your work faster and easier, and and that's the thing a lot of people, you know, especially when you're looking at even water fed when you get into which we're, we haven't talked about it all, but same kind of thing. It's like yeah, there's a little bit of a cost, but just think about what it's doing for you because you know these are the tools you're buying to make you money. And um, don't skimp on those tools because the, the less quality that you purchase, the more time it's going to take you to either replace it or redo it or whatever. So the it's, uh, it's important to recognize that's making you money. Yeah. The slower you'll build business too. If you're buying tools that aren't awesome, 
I mean, it's going to take you, you're going to be working 10 times harder because things fall apart or they're not doing what they're supposed to. And all of a sudden business is already taking you a long time because you're new buying a bad tool. And that's easier said than done when you've been in business for a long time, of course, but yeah, that's, that's a huge lesson. Yeah. You just reminded me a shout out for you on the, um, uh, American window cleaner magazine article that you wrote. That was top notch. It was on the basically using print ads and that sort of thing for your business, which today yeah. most people are trying to talk you out of doing print ads. So anyway, I thought it was a good article. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no problem. So I'll, uh, you know, we're questions seem to be winding down at this point. So do, do you have any, any things you want to ask? I do. And I want to ask this because if anybody knows from conventions or anything else, I like, one of the original people that helped me kind of learn things was Eddie. Eddie was just one of those guys that was everywhere. And I'm telling you, no matter how many times you saw him, he wanted to help. Just, you know, what did you get from him? Like, just not that I want to go down that road, of course, but like being that he was a part of your guys' company and he was a face of yours. He, he sure. helped so many people. Like what's the legacy he left? Like, yeah. what do you remember from that? Yeah, I mean, you know, Eddie, I mean, amazing, amazing guy. It's, you know, he, he was one of those, one of those people. And those of you that, that don't know him, I mean, obviously, if you look up Eddie Holder, find all kinds of things, he, I, IWCA, he was stellar. You know, he, he was, he was there forever. I think he weighed all of, you know, 98 pounds, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. little, little teeny guy from Lubbock, Texas. Um, sweetest guy and he was one of those like we'd be at, at the iwca show or some other shows that we used him and he you could hardly hear him because he was really soft spoken and he was really quiet and knew his stuff he was a window cleaner that's what he did for a living and um it's what he did all, all the way up to the end we would we would we hired him to do the shows for us and kind of be our spokesman and later some videos and things but his primary job was cleaning windows that's what he did yeah. so people would come up and they're like, yeah, I'm having a problem closing out on a skylight or doing whatever. And it's like, all right, you show me what you do. And then he would do it and you go, yeah, no wonder you're having trouble. That was terrible. Let me show you how to do it. Right. <laughs> and it, and it, but it was, it was because he did it for a li- just, it was, it was one of those where he had such respect that um, it's refreshing. It's yeah, refreshing. It, that, you know, yeah. he didn't, he didn't, it's like, you know, you, it's, you're not going to get it immediately. It's going to take you a little bit, but here, here's a technique that works and, and doing that. And he was just a pillar in the, in the industry. Um, yeah. you know, it was part of it. It was, I mean, obviously a shame, you know, unfortunately that happens, but you know, it's, it's, but that's this industry. And, and I, that kind of full circle into how we started our discussion. The, this industry is full of people like that. Um, people that are out there, nobody even knows who they are. They're cleaning windows. They do a great job. They do these things. And if somebody notices, and, you know, we meet them all the time. I mean, I, I could give you story after story. People meet all over the world that are, you know, we use your products. And, you know, when you came out with this, I was in, you know, London and this is what I did. And, and uh, yeah. you know, your, your tool, you know, again, I don't want to give away trade secrets in the industry, but a lot of our competitors started the people that created these new products were people that were using ours that kind of created their own thing, which is what window yeah. cleaners do. That's, that's what drives this industry. So, to answer your question, what legacy did Eddie leave was, you know, it, it you can be a great, um, what, I don't know what you call it, ethical guy in the industry, do a yeah. great job, work hard every day, and you love your life, you love what's going on, and, and we have a lot to give back, and that's what Eddie did. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, that's what we have a, they probably got to take a picture, but the, the, and if you see American Window Cleaning, they had a, we had a, I don't want to call it an ad, but a page layout, basically just kind of giving tribute to him. We've that's got awesome. that framed in our hallway. I mean, that's, oh, that's nice. yeah, Eddie, Eddie's a good guy. That's awesome. Yeah. Now you did t- touch on something before that. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, yeah. you guys are like in 50 countries or something like that. Like yeah, what, literally all what over does, the world. Yeah. What, what is that on a manufacturing side? What is that ad like logistically? What are the logistical nightmares of being everywhere like that? Because I couldn't imagine. I'm I have enough hard enough problems sticking in the U.S. Like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, so it's um it, it's funny because it you know you guys are doing a lot online. We're right now online. So I mean obviously that's the future of, of what we're we're basically doing. And um so we get this question a lot. I'll, I'm going to divert a little and then I'll come back to exactly yeah. what you asked me. But um 
you know, it, uh, so we get, you know, we'll hire some new marketing people. And I'm like, well, why do you sell distributors? Why don't you just go direct? Why don't you just do it? You know, Amazon and do it yourself, sell online, do this all and bypass all these other things. And it's like, okay, we're, we're an 85 year old company, 87 actually. And we've spent 80, I'll, I'll come up with a number, 84 developing distribution channels all over the world to do exactly what you just said. So we'll get, we get it, we get it now even. We get a guy, hey, I'm in, you know, northern New Zealand and I want to sell your products and, and here's the thing. And so it's okay, well, how are we going to get it? How can we afford to get that to northern New Zealand, being able to ship it without losing our shorts, um, doing all of this stuff? And then how much do they need to buy to make it worthwhile? So we end up doing that. We started out with we would um, have a main distributor per country, and it's like we'll give you exclusive on the country. So nobody else can sell it. It'll just be you just to kind of get that traction going. And yeah. we now have, you know, I don't have a direct count, but, you know, hundreds of distributors kind of literally scattered all over the world. Some of them really small, some of them really big. It just depends on kind of where they are. And now online, you guys are helping with that. I mean, you're saying oh, you're over US, but I mean, there's a lot of window cleaning distributors like yourselves that, you know, we'll, we'll be in wherever. And we'll see products that we know we don't sell there because we, yeah. we don't sell and they're still using our products. And I said, you know, where did you get that? <laughs> well, I bought it online, you know, whatever. And I shipped it to Australia or wherever. Yeah. So that that's actually, and Amazon obviously is doing that and, and running into some other stuff. I had kind of a funny story. My first trip to China years ago for work, we were, so we, we did our, did our China trip and, you know, we've been kind of selling there for a long time. And, and, um, so we're seeing some of the factories that were doing the whole thing. And then one day we decided to take a detour just to see China. So we, we end up in Beijing and uh, that's where the capital and the, the, the forbidden city is basically the, yeah. the tourist thing around where um, the emperors and all that used to live. Anyway, long story short, we go through this and at the end, so you get through the forbidden city and then you leave in the back where the emperors used to actually live. And there's, the one bathroom in the entire compound is there in the back of the thing. So it's like, hey, before we get out and get out into the main part of the city, I have to use the restroom. So I go in the restroom in the Forbidden City in Shanghai. There's a squeegee <laughs> sitting on the counter. And it's like, I got to look. <laughs> I yeah, can't just yeah. not look at this. Pick it up. And sure enough, it's at a squeegee. <laughs> so nice. it's like, even where we don't think we are, we are. So it's uh, yeah. one of those kinds of things. That, but yeah, so it, it's a lot of years of just trying to figure out how we're going to get stuff there. And, you know, this year has changed the ball a ton because of COVID not being able to be places and people are finding a way, you know, a lot of it is shipping and online and doing some different things. And yeah. a lot, we get, I don't know, daily, we get multiple people that want to sell online from all over the world that's a challenge in and of itself, but it's, yeah. it's, you know, and we still want to protect our distribution channel. So we're not going to, although we do sell in those particular things, we protect that pretty heavily to make sure you guys aren't being undercut by anybody who wants to. Yeah. Well, that's what people don't understand either is in the retail world, they think it's really easy. Like I'll sell this thing for us. And that's, but there's like maps, there's like uh, uh, prices that no one can sell under. And the only way to enforce that is to literally take that and then reprimand people who are selling under where they are. It's like the more distributors you have, the more it's like having 50 dogs all at the same time on different leashes. It's very hard to keep track of one or know which way it's going. And, and yeah. that's just, I mean, logistically, that's a huge thing in itself. When you're still trying to be dedicated to distributors, it's, it's, it's gotta be terribly hard. Oh yeah. And, and, um, you know, throw in, you know, now you're selling things all over the place online and half the time you don't even know who they are that's selling it. And it's changing, it's yeah. changing up, you know, what's going on. Here's a question that came up. I thought we'd get more of, but, um, SWC Bay, um, on Instagram is this, is this the weirdest year to date in our industry? You know, I haven't been in here since 1936, so I can't, I can't address back then, but I would have to say this is the weirdest year earth has seen yes <laughs> yeah. just uh, that's you know, it, it's you know, just when you think you know i mean I, I know you're on the east coast we're on the west coast and whatever but in general we're all kind of in the same story that's there um the other day i was talking to one of our customers in england 
and talking about what they're having to go through. They're doing the same thing. We have distributors and customers and employees in Europe, not on, you know, not on the island, but in other places, they're going through the same thing. Asia, you know, it's, this is definitely a worldwide, worldwide. thing. And, you know, because we're all locked down, nobody's even really looking anywhere, but like down the street, but, but yeah. this is everywhere. And, yeah. and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing that everybody's doing as well as we are considering what we've had to deal with. And, um, you know, I don't know if you want to add to that, because I know in the, in the window cleaning industry, I know May and June kind of die. Um, it did normally that was, that's the time everything takes off. And this year people were still locked down and seems to have recovered for the most part, although that's still questionable. Why don't you address like, cause yeah. we're seeing, everybody coming to you guys. So what, what are you seeing out there as far as the industry and what's happening with this COVID thing? Yeah, that S SWC Bay, uh, by the way, uh, tell us if you're doing good, uh, if your numbers are up, because I always like to know that because I hope you're doing good, but there's a lot of people who, I, and even we did it kind of on the distributing side, there was a point where uh, my gym was closed. It's the only thing I do in the morning, right? When I'm <laughs> working, but uh, I was doing like 15 hour days standing at my computer and we just, every single person you talk to is like, I don't know what's going on. Like we, and I'm standing there going, I don't know. Like, why am I even here? Why, why don't I go on an Island somewhere and just wait this thing out? Well, yeah. little did we know it would be months later, but it seemed to at a certain point where everything, then people went, okay, the uncertainty is kind of gone. We know that we're now in phase fill in the blank. And we know that our job is telling us we're coming back at this time. And all of a sudden they could kind of see the writing on the wall all of a sudden, everybody, and not everybody, and I apologize if, if you're in an area that didn't, didn't come recover quite like this, but a lot of people had then the best month they've ever had. And that was that last bit where everybody's at home. They're all looking at their windows. They got nothing to do but kind of get things cleaned. But then things have kind of tapered out again. And now the media is now on to the next big thing that's coming up with the, the election. So not only did we have the weirdest year yet, and I've, again, I went through the 2008 thing as a window cleaner and that was bad, but it was only local, right? It was just yeah. the U.S. that kind of had a messed up market. This is globally. I mean, yeah. I have people who, you know, watch Nation from all across the country and I have messages every single night from other countries. And I'm asking them, you know, in Denmark and in Switzerland and everywhere else, you know, they're the same thing where sometimes their media is not as bad. But the same thing is, is that people are still a little uncertain. So it is the weirdest thing that has ever happened in U.S. history. Nothing has shut down the entire planet like this. Uh, you know, regardless of what your beliefs are on it, 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 it has changed an entire market and has changed the way that our businesses are going to look from here on out. Maybe in four or five years, we may come back. But I know guys who are now fogging companies. I know guys who've just dropped their routes. I know fish franchises and not to throw names out, but they're one of the largest ones that I know multiple franchises that have closed yeah. because they're route based. You know, what, what do you do if all of a sudden 50% of your restaurants never reopen, you yeah. know? So it's, no one could have planned for it. It's pretty tough. I hope everybody out there is doing good with it. But well, no, I mean, and, you know, you go into that and it's, it's, you know, we're, I'm in California at this point where our restaurants still aren't open. Um, you know, that, that are basically there except for outside, which we can do longer, but I mean, it, it still gets cold here, yeah. you know, whatever. So it's, it's, it's not over uh, by any means. Um, so, um, Jacob Williams, just throwing that out there that, um, he says his business is 60% compared to last year in the Bay area. Um, um, so it, it's, it's picking up and, and getting back to normal, but th that's, that's kind of, cause our summer months are when window cleaning really takes off. And this yeah. is kind of when that hit was right in the beginning of summer. So the bulk of the money that you would have made didn't happen. So, and it's really hard to make that up. So it's. Um, yeah. And by the way, Jacob Williams, he's an OG uh, in the WCR crowd. He is, uh, uh, has a YouTube channel. I don't know that they're doing much anymore, but he's referred to as a backflip boy. Okay. Uh, so he really likes your products because, yeah. you know, yeah, he's done that, some stuff yeah. for us for sure. I'm glad you pointed yeah. that out. Yeah. But, but uh, uh, yeah, he, he said he's picking up and SWC actually says that he's 60% compared to last year in the Bay area. And I know the Bay area has been one of those kind of really hard hit areas, like kind of Boston's another one. I don't know what's going on in Boston, but I, I've heard from multiple companies that are just, they don't know what to do. It's, mm -hmm. it's been crazy, but. Well, right. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of the cities, you know, that, you know, I know New York for sure, San Francisco, Chicago, for the most part, 
the buildings are vacant. They're not maintaining yeah. anything. Nobody's cleaning windows because nobody's really working in them. And, you know, that may or may not come back. I guess we'll find out. You know, I did, yeah. it, that doesn't mean that's the end. We just have to adapt and adjust, which yeah. is what entrepreneurs do. But, it, uh, but, you know, when you're used to doing this, now we got to do yeah. this. It's like uh, that, that takes a bit to make that change. 2020 was going to be the year though. It's that sexy number, right? 2020. Everybody's like, Oh, 2020. I'm going to, and then this all happened. Everybody went, what is going yeah. on? How did that uh, happen? So I, I equate this. So, so I, I'll, I'll venture to say 2020 is the year and what year it is, is, you know, when you get on an elevator and you, you, you see it, it goes from 12 to 14. Yeah. 2020 is going to be that year. So <laughs> they're going to go from 2019 to 21 and it's just going to be off the books. Like nobody's even going to, you know, nobody's going to care what sport team won. Nobody's going to care about anything. Yeah. So that's it. That we, I like that you said that the word pivot has been used in 2020. And I very much dislike that, that word because it's been kind of overused, but that's literally what we're doing. I mean, yeah. you got guys that I talked to somebody just earlier today and he's talking, Oh, it's, it's so bad. He doesn't know what to do. Like he used to be a route cleaner and I was changing things and he's doing something with uh, trash bins now. And awesome. He pivoted and we just kind of sat there for a second and we were like, but 2021, 2021 is going to be a great, you know, every, nobody even cares that it's Q4, fourth quarter here. They're just like, just be over with the year. Right. Well, I think that's because, you know, we all kind of initially it was like, oh, a couple of weeks, we'll be fine. You know, we got, we got to do this hunker down and uh, it's what, nine months now? Yes. <laughs> on, the, on the manufacturing side, how did that affect you guys? Uh, not to go back to manufacturing, but how, yeah. I mean, doing that, like people don't understand yet. Yeah, it stunk for us because we couldn't work for a month, but if you can't produce 150,000 squeegees for that one month, and like the next month, the demand is still there. How do you ever catch up? Like, how yeah, that it, it's that that's been a challenge in a million different levels. Um, but you know, what, what was, what was interesting that happened to us, um, we're still fighting it. That's it. We're by no means out of this whole thing, but, um, you know, so we all got the announcement, you know, again, we're in California. So for us, I think we were the first state to close. Everybody followed fairly quickly yeah. after that, but, um, um, March 13th, I think was, was the day. So we, we had this, this specific thing. And then we got notified by places like Home Depot and Lowe's and Amazon and some other places that we sell that we are considered a, a essential business because they're considered an essential business. So we have to supply them. So that was the discussion. So we all you know, heard what was said. Everybody needs to go home. You need a social distance. You need to quarantine yourself, stay away from everybody else. And it's like, okay, Everybody, but everybody here can't, we have to come in and we're a factory. We make stuff. We get stuff from China. We get stuff from Europe. We get stuff from all over the world. Like, so how do we do this? And I mean, literally the first day I remember going, going to work, it's like, okay, am I going to be followed by a drone? I mean, what's going to like, I'm not supposed to be out on the road. It's laughable yeah, yeah. now, but literally I was concerned. Like I'm not yeah. supposed to be out at all. And, um, you know, and that was all fine. And then we had to social distance. Nobody's allowed in the building and, you know, you had to do this and, the jobs that are close together and in a factory setting, there are many that are that way. We had to try to make that separated as much as you physically possibly can, you know, when you do all that. And then all of a sudden, two weeks later, it's probably a little bit longer than that. The, the things like online sales and all that exploded and went out of control and it shifted yeah. what people bought because people, people were home doing different things. And so, um, in general, it, it shifted. And so now we can't get trucks. The ships are completely all booked up from China. Like if, if, you know, we've had customers go, hey, we'll pay the freight. You need to expedite that from your factories in China. We can't get a date to expedite it. Yeah. Not to mention it's going to be $60,000 to expedite that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But it'll only get here a day sooner because it's going to be six weeks out before we can even get it on the plane. You know, it's yeah. that and that's still happening. Um, you nice. know, that, that, that's part of that. So, it, you know, and, and, you know, you go to the grocery store, you know, we couldn't get toilet paper for however long. And yeah. you know, now you're starting to see that again, coming back, sort of, I mean, although I, you know, I'm a Diet Dr. Pepper fan, I can't get any Diet Dr. Pepper. It's none on the shelf. It, oh. You know, and it's like, come on, aren't we through this yet? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but, you know, so we're still seeing remnants of having some issues. And I don't know about where you are, but there are nothing but trucks on the road everywhere here. Yeah. And so it's really difficult to even get any. So well, it's, it, when you look at factories being to production, obviously 
if Ettore in general could produce more in the time that they had, they would, they'd have to, mm -hmm. right? They're yeah. producing X amount every single day. Yeah. So when you have all of a sudden a surplus that you need to come up with, but yet the factories were closed, yeah. you can't produce more employees and more time and more yeah. equipment. And you can't run equipment more than it's yeah. already running in some cases. And, and there's just and, like this weird thing of like, how you know it's like guys that are window cleaners they're working seven days a week and they're going well okay i had these extra days i'm not going to see my family for a while but in the manufacturing side that doesn't necessarily exist you yeah. can't make squeegee handles if you don't have plastic you can't yeah. make channels if you don't have brass or br yeah. it's no that, it's, that's exactly it's, the case and then that is exactly why stores have shelves that are empty because it's it's yeah. You know the demand shifted you know and i've had this discussion this week as a matter of fact with one of our larger customers on the retail side and you know well you know why are we having trouble getting soap you make that locally well sure this the soap's no problem if you want it in a baggie i can send it to you right now we can't get bottles because the sanitizers are going nuts and all the sanitizer companies are using up all the plastics for the bottle so we can't get yeah. it yeah. so you know I, again I have soap. <laughs> I just can't get it to you in any form that you could sell it, you know, whatever. And, and a lot of people, so, oh, yeah, I never even thought of that. Well, yeah, that's that's what happens. You know, aluminum, yeah. brass is used for other things. When they were doing the respirators that were going nuts, there was a lot of metals used to make those. So those raw materials were gone. Like yeah. you couldn't get anything. And then yeah. you know, that stuff's within it. You know, that's a crisis year. I think we're through most of that. The hard work, part, the, 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 the big part, we're, we're through that. We're through yeah. the big, the hardest part, I think. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, and then, you know, then, then what is this new? And I, I hate these, these terms, you know, what's the new normal? I hate that, that kind of comment, yeah. but what is, what is everybody's business going to look like when we start doing whatever it is that we're supposed to be doing after all? Cause it, you know, we've now had nine months to kind of reprogram. So will we go back to exactly what we did before? I doubt it. I think there's going to be some changes, but not necessarily bad changes. They're just not going to be the same. So we're just going to have to adapt and work with that. Yeah, it's so. uh, it's the it's the pivot term. But I want to say uh, what's up to Bobby Walker, by the way. He's an awesome guy. Great podcast. What's going on, Bobby Walker? Just came in. So. Cool. That's what's fun about these is you uh, you don't realize who's, who's watching, but it's fun to, to see. So. Well, I mean, you know, that we don't want to make this be forever. We've been on live now for an hour, but um, yeah, I don't know. You you want to close up with with a, kind of a shout out or something, or or yeah, you know, yeah. it's been a pleasure for sure. Absolutely, I want to start by saying, if A. McKennedy, if you're still here watching and listening, uh, we want to swap something out. If it's okay with you, I said I was going to give away a gross of rubber. Uh, I want to give you a starter kit, an Ettore starter kit. Um, if you're watching, contact me. I'll give you my number direct. As everybody knows, 862-312-2026. Just be like, yo, what's up? And uh, we'll get that out to you. So hopefully that helps you start. You're not going to start cheap. You're going to start with uh, quality equipment and uh, you'll be like me and then you'll be an editor for life. So awesome. if, uh, if anybody who's watching too doesn't know any of my stuff, I'd like to just quick plug, check out WCR Nation, the window cleaning podcast. It's a podcast all about uh, window cleaning the business side. I won't ever tell you how to use a channel or squeegee, but uh, we talk about the business side. So definitely check that out. And if you need any supplies, Ed Ray, of course, uh, but any supplies you need, uh, we're direct and ready for you anytime. I'd love to be your rep. 862-312-2026. And that's my direct number. So call me or text me. Great. So, and, you know, to throw out the other plug, you know, obviously, you know, we're, we're discussing, you know, WCRs, one of, one of our big distributors in the window cleaning business. And there's a handful of them um, that are out there. And, you know, you guys, I mean, obviously you're physically located on the East coast, but you ship everywhere. So, you yeah. know, it, it, anything that's there, if you have any questions, you know, these guys, these guys are there, they're young and hip. <laughs> and, uh, you know, <laughs> I, and really I, I only team. say that because, because because of the industry and generally we have multiple generations you guys are kind of the new yeah. kids on the block and um do a great job you got you know you got some great tools and resources and don't hesitate they, they do a great job and they've, they've been great for the industry um and initially it, it didn't it didn't start out that way because people didn't like change but you guys have made yeah. some good positive things that came in there so yeah. i've really appreciated spending spending an hour with you That's hopefully we can do this again i think this was very valuable and i from what I'm hearing and seeing on the thing, I think a lot of other people did too. 
Awesome. Yeah, I appreciate you guys having me on. Uh, by the way, uh, thanks to uh, Chris Santos, by the way. He's been in the back uh, background doing a lot of stuff, setting everything up. So thanks to him for all his hard work, just like yours. So thank you. Appreciate it. Great. Well, we'll talk to you soon. And I look forward to whatever happens next. I guess, I guess November 3rd is the next big milestone. I guess we'll figure yeah. out what happens then. We'll talk the fourth. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Right. Hey, take care. And we'll, we'll talk to you soon.